All right, all right, what's going on? Rights of Fathers, Muhammad here. Part two of how I lost custody of my son and hopefully things you can do to avoid it. Again, this channel is for dads and future dads only, okay? All right, so part one, I'm just gonna give a quick summary. Um, I just be briefly talked about how um, I found out that my son was subjected to psychiatric shock therapy and that he was put on psychiatric schedule two drugs called Ritalin. Now, uh, the, the psychiatric drug Ritalin is really not like an end-all be-all reason that that I uh, protested or the fact that he was placed in shock therapy I mean you know legally I, I was supposed to be notified about that but the the issue what what I took issue with uh, with was the uh, the reasoning behind it um, so in going in going through my son's education records, um, I um, I realized well I didn't realize I actually read a bunch of just a bunch of lies that that they used to justify placing him into uh, the psychiatric shock therapy and then uh, the reasoning that they use for um, putting them on psychiatric drug. Uh, let's put aside, you know, the f how young he, he is, he was at that time. And, um, and let's put, put aside the fact that, you know, he had um, so-called problems in school, but, or the fact that you know, I wasn't notified, even though I, um, legally I, they were supposed to notify me. Um, it was just the blatant lies that that they used to justify putting them in there. It was from from reading the whole thing. Um, it was it was over 300 pages, mind you, um, and I I still got all of the paperwork, by the way. Um, uh, eventually, when I have some time, I'm gonna I'm gonna upload it to my website, and I'm gonna redact like his name and stuff like that. But I'll I'll allow you guys to see like the reasoning that they use, and you understand you know why I had to do what I did. But um, after I read the whole thing, the the main gist of what I got was that they had been plotting this for a bit, for like a, for over two years, you know. Uh, honestly, no, they have been doing this for over four years, um, since he was four years old. And um, the way that they started, it was um, they uh, his mom put him in some sort of like, um, it was like a, it was like a pre-K, pre-K kind of thing. Um, I can't remember what it's called uh, right now on the top of my head. Um, if it comes to me, you know, I'll let you guys know. But um I started reading his records, like going all the way back to that, you know, when when his mom put him in, in that pre-K, pre-K thing, I honestly thought it was, it was like, um, it was sort of like a daycare kind of thing, you know. I thought maybe because of her, her job, you know, and her work, she, she needed to put him somewhere, you know, during her placement time. So somebody, somebody that she somewhat trusts can watch him. You know, I, I honestly thought that's what that was, but but when I started reading the the records, I was so disturbed. Um, some of the things that they put in there was like um, the main thing was that um, was it was the whole cultural thing. You know, um, you know they said that because he was. He was cultural that he, he had tr uh, problems adapting um, and um, he has defiance um, he's subjected to violence 
of, of course, all of these things were extremely false. I mean, he was, he was like, you know, five years old. Like, I mean, come on, like, you know, I wouldn't have taken it this far, you know, if I, if there was any semblance of that, you know. I mean, I grew up in, you know, a loving family, both my parents. I grew up overseas, you know. I, you know, from, from, from where I'm from, you know, we don't have any of those kind of problems like child abuse and, and all of those kind of nonsense. This is all like an American thing, you know, because, um, overseas, you know, where I grew up, you know, we, we grew up in like, kind of like, uh, you know, inside of a university, you know, so like, you know, my my, my dad was at work all day. My mom was at home. You know, she was a stay-at-home mom. So we were we were thoroughly taken care of, you know. So we didn't have any reason for, like, you know, um, going, uh, to undergo any kind of, like, physical trauma. You know, if anything, the only kind of trauma that we went through was just um, from just moving around the world so much, you know, traveling, living in so many different continents and adapting to new environments, learning the new language. That was the extent of, you know, the kind of trauma that we experienced, you know. But as far as, like, physical, like, we don't really, you know, do that kind of thing, you know. That seems to be more prevalent in America than anywhere else, you know. But anyway, um... Of course, if they had evidence, you know, I would have been arrested, right? I mean, <laughs> so basically, they um, they they had assigned him a social worker from uh, Family Services of Wisconsin, and I, I actually sued her. Um, her name was Sheila. It was Sheila something. I can't remember her name, but you guys will see it in the court records, you know. But. Um, so basically this they they had to have been like they had to have a, a strategy you know it was some sort of a strategy they so this social worker you know um just she made so many like racist i hate to use the word racist but she literally was you know she used a lot of like she used a lot of her reasoning based on culture you know like it wasn't nothing to do with something actually happening to him like or him getting into a fight or or evidence of bruising or abuse or police report or anything like that it was literally just uh, i i believe that um because of his cultural background type of you know situation you know and the the her this this social worker ended up referring him to a, a psychi a psychiatrist by the name of um Carolyn, it's Carolyn something. I gosh, it's been like a few years. I'm, I'm starting to forget all their names. Carolyn Hendricks, that's her name. Dr. Carolyn Hendricks. You guys can Google her. And, and you guys could call her and ask her if she knows me, you know, because I actually went and visited her, you know. And and I actually brought all the documents and I questioned her, you know. And she had a lawyer, the, the director of... of um, their hospital was there and and wouldn't let her answer any of my questions you know but but look her up dr carolyn hendrix was her name and uh so yeah so um so the dr kelly hendrix you know she, the very first thing she did was put him on ritalin like i mean like the the after the first appointment you know what i'm saying and uh, of course she excluded, I was completely excluded, unaware of everything that was happening. Now I know a lot of you guys will think like, uh, you know, so what, you know? Yeah, so what if your your child was, was, was brought for help for psychiatric, you know, reasoning? But just ask yourself this question, what if, what if the reasoning is for a diabolical purpose. It wasn't because he actually needed any kind of psychiatric help. What if somebody used it for a diabolical plan to, to put an innocent child through, 
you know, psychiatric abuse and through psychiatric trauma, psychiatric shock therapy. I don't, I don't think you guys realize what shock, what shock therapy is. It's like the type of thing they used to do in the 50s to like lobotomize people. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, I mean, like you guys, you know, in America, you, um, you guys are so quick to to go for psychiatric help for like, oh, I'm depressed, you know? And instead of looking at you know you're looking within to figure out okay what's the real problem you want to go you want to just bring a child i mean i'm not even talking about an adult i'm talking about a, a completely innocent child and put him on a schedule two psychiatric drugs without without involving both parents like how okay if you're really trying to help them why don't why didn't they question me like when they're making all these claims about abuse why didn't they question me right why didn't they file police support right i mean they, they, his you know all these people they're so quick to call police on me like i mean <laughs> you know they called police on me for for there was a time when they um his mom dropped him off on my placement day and, and called the cops and claimed that I kidnapped him. I'm serious. And the cops came and literally, you know, I had to show them paperwork that this is my placement day. She's just, you know, she's just, this is just a ploy, you know. She's that type of a person. And, and you're going to claim that this child is subject to abuse from the father and you don't have any shred of evidence that so you don't file any police report. You don't question the father. And and if I and and if he was subject to to child abuse, you know, why was I the one bringing them to court? You know what I'm saying? Like, I would not be running, or would not would not be avoiding court, so I wouldn't have to ask, you know, answer those questions. And 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 when I actually went to court, you won't believe it. Then they won't even they didn't ask me nothing. Like. I was wait, I was hoping they would ask me, you know, hey, um, so on this report it showed that you your your child was abused, you know. So where's you know how how do you not <laughs> how do you not question me, you know? So at that point I realized the whole thing is just bullshit. It's a scam, you know. That they they're, they're the whole the only reason they're doing this is basically just to remove me from his life because they knew that. I was going to question their intent. I was going to, you know, after reviewing all these records, I was going to question them, you know what I'm saying? Because they knew that they were violating my um, parental rights, right? So, um, right. So, anyway, that was the reason, you know, that I took them to court. So, when I actually went to court... Um, that's when I realized, you know, how much of a game this whole this whole country is. Like, the family court is literally a joke. It's it's like it's just um, it's basically a place where they 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 get to pick who they want to be the parent. They they're gonna be the the deciders of of you know who they believe should be the parent. And of course, they're gonna side with the one that that is making the system money right because he's in all these social programs english as second language he's taking psychiatric drugs you know he's seen psychiatrists he's seen social workers so of course it, it's all about money right it's it's it ain't got shit to do with my kid because you know if you if, if they if they really cared about my kid they wouldn't they would have questioned me right and the the main the the only reason I lost was because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so when I went to court, you know, like there, like like I was mentioning earlier, there were they had um, everything was recorded. You know, they were like following all the procedures and and like you know and and just I just didn't know what I was doing. So they, when they realized that, oh man, they were literally having a field day, you know. They'll act like, you know, oh yeah. 
oh this is terrible and then all of a sudden you know i got they got like a whole state of witnesses like the social worker the psychiatrist the psychologist the school counselor the the this the that this like everybody was was just obviously going to defend themselves in front of the judge of course you're got they're not going to say oh yeah we were just making shit up just to just to um get him on drugs we, we were just you know we had malicious we had malicious intent and we we're being racist assholes and culturally biased and you know all of course they're not going to say that you know they had to defend their their so-called work right so now at this point like i like i thought i had a slam dunk case like it's so simple like there's you know a cus there's a private agreement between the parents that was certified by the state and one party violated the agreement and everybody else involved was part of this violation so it should have been like an easy case right but no they made it so complicated dragged it on for like two years and this whole time i'm I like i was like following you know the regular public laws and procedures you know deprivation of rights under the color of law and citing all these statutes and all this bullshit and that's the reason why i lost so when i when i actually lost the case i i was i was so i was so hurt but on the very first day I came across some some information, some knowledge. I'm sorry, the the exact day that I lost, you know, mind you, the case took like over two years. You know what I'm saying? And um, and uh, and on the day that I lost, it, it was almost like destiny. You know, that's when I came across private information. And at as soon as I came across it, I knew this thing was it was something you know and i i literally just buried myself in all these books for like the next five years like i just kept studying 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 and then applying it you know i'm applying it applying it applying it but I, the mistake that i made was i should have waited till i fully mastered it but as soon as i came across something boom i tried it but of course because i didn't have the full 360 knowledge uh, um the judge knew that i was i was getting to i was going somewhere but i didn't fully really understood it so the judge just kept ignoring me like i like he just kept ignoring me just he would they never respond like never respond i tried any kind of paperwork you could think of they just they just wouldn't respond when i and when I finally figured out what's happening, I filed a motion. And and when we show, uh, and, and anytime I file a motion, they will never have a, a, a court reporter because they know that I knew what was going on. So it, it, it basically right now is at the point where like, um, no, they basically kind of like blacklisted me where like, it, whatever no matter what i file they're never they're never going to respond if they do respond i'm never going to go to a real court it, they'll just bring me into like a little hallway and then bring bring us into some kind of private room and there's it's not going to be public record it's not like it's it's just like a private thing that never existed you can't prove nothing and they'll just ignore everything you say because if it's not on a record you can't prove anything so it's like it's almost like they're just playing games with me right now pretty much you know um and uh and because i made so many mistakes um in my first federal case even when i take them to federal court they they just sanction me like anytime i file any kind of paperwork they'll just sanction me find me a thousand dollars for just filing the paperwork you know what i'm saying and when I appeal it to a, to an appeals court, they'll sanction me too for another thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? So that's the kind of game that they're playing right now. You know. So, but uh, with with the, you know, with the 
kind of knowledge that I acquire, you know, I can take it, I can take them to like, like an extreme end, like, you know, put liens on them and that kind of thing, you know, put the IRS on them. But, you know, I'm not getting to that point yet because that's, it's pretty extreme.